Okay, today we're looking at, I suppose, key performance indicators within the context of a calf to weaning system. So essentially we're talking about a spring calving herd where all the calves are sold after weaning and a proportion of heifers are retained as replacements uh, for the future. For the future. Um, the, K, the five key KPIs for a calf to weaning system are essentially cows, ca uh, cows weaned, or calves weaned per, per cow in the herd per year. Um, we're talking about age at first calving. We're talking about six week calving rate. Uh, those first three KPIs could be, I suppose, classified as reproductive KPIs. So cow reproductive performance is driving those. We have two more KPIs then. They're, I suppose, could be termed productive. We're talking about calf average daily gain to weaning. And uh, we're talking about concentrates fed per cow calf unit on the farm. So in terms of driving profitability, what we've looked at uh, ultimately is we've compared the performance of a uh, commercial high performing farms and we've compared those with the national average farms. So your national average farm, this would be data we've obtained from the Chagas National Farm Survey and the Irish Cattle Breeding Federation. We've looked at, I suppose, the economic impact of moving from, a, we call it relatively moderate to low technical efficiency, going up to very high technical efficiency, and the impact of that on profitability. And we, we have a ranking of the KPIs in the order I outlined there, and cumulatively they're worth about 300 euros uh, per cow on the farm in terms of net margin. So that's the scope that's there to increase profitability from a technical perspective on the farm. So today at the Dairy Cafe to Beef Stand we're talking about the key performance targets that need to be maintained to maintain opt optimal levels of performance that's ultimately going to increase in, in uh, high net margins for, for Dairy Cafe to Beef farmers. So ultimately the key performance indicators for Dairy Cafe to Beef production is uh, reducing calf mortality during the rearing phase, having a weaning weight of 85 kilos, and then maintaining high levels of performance during the first winter, first grazing season, first winter, second season of pasture and winter indoor finishing period. So during the first season of pasture, calves that perform poorly will be 40 kilos lighter at housing compared to those that perform well, which ultimately is going to reduce your farm profit by 40 euro per head for those, for those 24 months deer systems. So for successful, for successful dairy calf to beef production systems, grassland, grassland and, and grass silage breeding and health are ultimately going to be the key profit indicators that are going to result in, in net margins for 24 months this year systems of about 20, of 204 euro. So the take home messages we have in the dairy calf to beef stand is first of all have a herd health plan in place before calves are purchased. Purchase sires that purchase calves from sires that purchase calves with known sires and also monitor the performance of the calves throughout the animal's lifetime and into the adulthood stage as well, that you're going to reach these key performance indicators. Ultimately, if you don't, that's going to mean that the animals will be on the farm for a longer period. It's going to reduce the stock carrying capacity of your farm. Ultimately, it's going to reduce your overall farm profit. Well, on the high performance stand today, we're looking at sort of two areas in specific, uh, specifically. First of all, we're looking at the overall uh, breeding index. We're looking at the value of the terminal index and the replacement index and what are the key traits that we're looking for. And basically, through the work that we've done uh, and through the analysis of the BDGP herds, for example, there's about 24,000, we're looking to see are the five-star animals outperforming the one-star. And certainly, the evidence is that, uh, that it is. Um, so we've got the breeding index and where farmers can actually use it to get more genetic gain into the herd. The second area then is two key areas of management that we're looking for farmers to focus on. Number one, should we try and get more AA because of the higher selection of bulls, bulls with higher reliabilities uh, and, and actually from an economic point of view probably more attractive to smaller herds. Uh, and secondly, we're looking at the fact that only 24% of our heifers calve at 22 to 26 months of age and we're trying to increase that. And it is it's very achievable. We have a very good live demo with the Farmers Journal, ICBF and Chagas. Um, but you know you need to know what the performance weights, what the targets are at weaning time. Uh, at, at turnout, at bullying, and then what animal with these animals should be coming in. And it's critically important that we use high reliability, easy calving sires. We certainly don't want to put the heifers under pressure from a calving point of view in the first year. Yeah, so what we're trying to get across today is how to increase grass growth, but more importantly, increase the utilisation. So we've seen the grazing infrastructure village and what we're targeting is soil fertility. How can we improve our soil fertility to grow more grass and creating our lime status, our P and our K indexes on our farm? The second point then is looking at the grazing management. How do we manage our grass across the year? So mid-season management, continually grazing the correct covers to increase animal performance and increase 
uh, increase the amount of grass that we're growing on our farm and all with thinking ahead so it's not what we're doing today and what we're doing tomorrow what we do now has implications for the for the next two and three weeks in terms of uh, the mid-season management and in terms of autumn management what we do in autumn has huge implications for next spring and, and for the remainder of the year so we're now five weeks away from the first of August and what we need to be starting doing from the first of August is actually plan for the remainder of the year when what paddocks are we going to graze how what order are we going to graze them in and are we going to have enough grass to get to the to the early or mid-November when you target it and what can we do to actually get that and what we actually do uh, from the 1st of August to the end of November has huge implications on the amount of grass that we have available on our farm the following spring so if we want to target early turnout we need to have that blanket of grass built up and the third and final element that we're talking about is actually reseeding and the role of white clover so reseeding is a very valuable tool on Irish grassland farms but we must be able to get correct or certain aspects correct in terms of getting the most from our reseed and these go back to your soil fertility your grazing infrastructure and your grazing management and also the role of white clover so clover is very very important and can act as a huge tool on Irish grassland farms and it's just a role that it can add in terms of fertiliser, um, gra grazing management in, in terms of reducing a fertiliser, increasing grass growth but also increasing animal performance and putting all these together in a package to help farmers grow and utilise more importantly this additional grass that they're able to grow on their farm.